everyone, Sam and I are back and we're super excited to be working with Trinity Stamps for this installment of Too Many Cards. Trinity Stamps products are cheerful, quirky, and innovative, so be sure to check them out. Denise has sent us a very generous bundle of goodies, including the Let the Good Times Roll stamp set. This stamp set is small but mighty, and I really love that I can color parts of the sentiments. The coordinating dies for the stamp set. The Slimline Card Series, Scalloped Card Panels and Borders. The Slimline Card Series Scenic Border Die Set, which includes clouds, a road, and grass. And the Layered Mountainside Stencil Set, which covers pretty much everything you want in a background, including clouds, trees, mountains, rocky cliffs, and stones. We also received some beautiful accessories and embellishments, including a white bristle blending brush that comes with a cap and is self-standing, heart jelly drops in a licorice mix, tic-tac mix, and clear crystal rhinestones. Also included is a cute little snack pack of tea and a wafer cookie, as well as the most adorable sequin mix of rainbows and white hearts. I'm using all of the stamps and dies Tanisa sent us, and I started my first card with the larger slimline panel. I'm going to use the layered mountainside stencil set, and I think this might be the first video tutorial on it, so I'm going to take the time to explain how to use this stencil. I printed out the reference photo from the Trinity Stamps website, and then started labeling the parts of the stencil to get my bearings. I used washi tape to attach the openings so I could visualize the different sections. As you can see by the photo of the finished card, I'm going to create two cliffs or mountaintop plateaus and these are a four step layering process using a single stencil. I'll start in one corner of the stencil and rotate it counterclockwise to create the 3D mountaintop. It's the coolest thing ever and such an incredibly clever design. I love it when you can get this much dimension in a background without creating any bulk. I need four colors to create this, so I have my green and brown distress inks ready for ink blending. I thought that keeping those pieces in the holes would prevent my brush from creating shapes on the peripheral of what I was currently trying to ink up, but they didn't, and that's a testament to the fine bristles of the blending brush. I made several mistakes in the process, which I have completely cut out of the video, so I have to add post-it notes to protect all the open areas of the stencil. I start with the flat plateau area of the mountain top, then I clean the stencil and rotate it to create the first side, which is the bottom or frontmost side portion of the panel. The stencils have etched lines to indicate every part of the stencil so you know exactly where everything lines up. I've used a lot of stencils, but this is definitely one of the most innovative and clever ones I've come across. It takes a bit of brain work, not something we all have at the moment, <laughs> but we all know that art and creativity makes us smarter, so it's nice to have to think carefully about something while we're creating. I make sure to clean the stencil between each step and rotate it again to blend in the second side, which is the main side, completing the shape of the mountain. As I rotate, the colors get darker and darker, so that's something to remember when using the stencil. The last part of the stencil provides the shadow for both sections of the carved mountainside, making it three-dimensional. The awesome thing about the stencil is that you can flip it to the other side to make the same scene on the other side of the card. I don't want the mountains to be the same because no two mountains are the same. I wanted some variation in my scene, so I set this one lower and a little off to the right and went through the same process, although now I'm rotating the stencil clockwise. You'll notice that the scallops are getting inked up, but that doesn't matter because I'll be cutting out the center of this and placing it on another slimline die cut. After the two mountains are finished, I switch to another stencil included in the same stencil set. This one includes six inch wide scenes and I'm going to use the water and tree line here. I want to add water between the two mountains, so I choose the portion of the water I want to show and carefully mask off surrounding areas to protect them from the blue inks. After the water is done, I move to the tree line, which isn't quite long enough for this slim line design. That doesn't matter because the stencil's made so that you can shift it over and continue the tree line. I just have to be very careful around the edges of the stencil. Now my background is finished and I just have to remove the edges in my trimmer. It's time to stamp, heat emboss, and watercolor all of the images for both cards. I'm going to put on some music and speed through all of these processes and I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes.
love the process of die cutting and seeing all these little images come out of the die cutting machine. They're just so cute! One of the things I love about Trinity stamps is that all their sentiments have individual dies too. I do prefer my sentiments to be stamped directly onto the card base or panel, but these ones are cut so closely to the edges of the words so they look very natural, or at least the next best thing to being stamped directly onto the card base or panel. I really love them, especially with the colored bubble letters. I use liquid glue to attach the scene to the card base, then I use a combination of glue dots and foam tape to attach the images and sentiment to the panel. The mountain tops are so perfect for these adorable little jackalopes, mushrooms, and flowers. I'm going to make this a shaped card by scoring the back side of the card at half an inch from the edge of the card and using a strip of super strong score tape to attach to the front of the card. The reason why I score it is so that it's easy to open and stand up for display purposes. To finish the card, I add some stickles along the ripples in the water to add sparkle and that element of magic to tie in with the jackalopes and the sentiment. This would be a sweet encouragement card to receive in these trying times. For my second card, I'm going to use the rest of the images I stamped and colored, including the two adorable roller skating unicorns. They're so magical and I wanted to tie in the sentiment too, with a road in the form of a sparkly shaker. I'll be using the same shaped card base, as well as scenic border dies, which are sized for slimline cards. Using my images to gauge where I want the clouds and grass to be located, I tape the dies down and run them through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine. Once those two pieces are separated, I tape down the road piece and die cut that as well. Next, I'm going to ink blend the clouds and grass. One thing I wanted to mention was that I had been using that one blending brush to ink blend the entire background on the first card and cleaning it with a chamois in between. It didn't take a lot of effort at all and the colors didn't mix with each other. I'm very impressed with these Trinity Stamps blending brushes and highly recommend them. Unfortunately, when I was done with the tree line on the first card, I put it aside and forgot to do that final cleaning, so I got some green mixed in with my blues on these clouds, but I actually like how it looks, so I wasn't too concerned with it. I attach the ink blended borders to the frame using 1 8 inch score tape. I also add that plain center second, leaving out the strip that will have the acetate window for the shaker portion of the card. To create the walls for the shaker, I once again die cut the slimline die from Fun Foam and adhere it to the front panel using score tape. I cut out the center so I could see where I would have to use the road die to cut away for the shaker section. This part was a little tricky and finicky, but once it was done, it was really satisfying. Finally, I add the heart jelly drops and crystal clear rhinestones in the channel and seal it with acetate. The other way you can do this is to place the drops and rhinestones directly onto the card base, guessing where it is, and placing the front of the card over top without a second piece of acetate. However, given the size of this card, it was easier for me to completely trap the accents in there before attaching it to a card base. There was a frame on the acetate only because in my first attempt at this card, I attached the acetate to the front before attaching the inked borders. You don't actually need to attach the border to this back piece of acetate. Oh, I love this so much. It's so beautiful. I actually wanted to leave the card like this and not put a backing on it because I loved looking through that section and playing with it. It did give me an idea for a clear card though. Here's another look at both cards side by side. Both feature the Slimline card series dies as well as different elements of the Let the Good Times Roll stamp set and coordinating dies. I love how you can get such different looks with the same stamp set. I showcase two of the three stencils included in the layered mountainside stencil set and I love it so much. I'm excited to see what else I can do with it and you're also going to be blown away by Sam's use of the stencils. Which card do you like better? Be sure to leave a comment here and on Sam's YouTube channel for your chance to win a $25 gift certificate to the Trinity Stamp Store. Comments will close at 11.59 p.m. Eastern on August 3rd, 2020 and the winner will be announced before our next Too Many Cards videos go live please check back to see if you've won. Thanks so much for all your love and support for this video series. If you enjoyed today's video, please click on the subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss the next one. Be sure to head to my blog for all the details, more photos, and a full supply list. Thanks so much for watching.